But ultimately, I want to answer the question, is this product really necessary? How good can this thing actually be? And who are they making this for? What's its targeted use case? Well, I'll tell you what, first impressions are positive at least. The thing feels great in your hand. It feels like it's made from quality materials. It's got an LED light in the head so you can see what you're working on. It's got a rechargeable battery so you're not dealing with any wires or anything like that while you're trying to make your dexterous and tactile cuts. And considering how fast this blade is moving in a second, it's actually a surprisingly compact package. Now this thing's marketed to use with 3D printing for post-processing, specifically like support removal, for example. And I guess depending on how difficult the supports are to remove, this could be a really good thing. But I guess that means we've got to do something that I never do. Print something with supports and see how well it removes them. My wife needed some skeletons printed out for use in her classroom, so she picked a model and said, print three of them. And of course it needed to be this, like, super weird, incredibly over-supported, very detailed model with fine features and stuff. So for the first of the three models I printed out, I decided to remove the supports the old-fashioned way. That basically means these cheap side cutters that you get with every printer and like, a bunch of time. This took nearly an hour to complete, which is just about an hour longer than I typically spend post-processing my prints. And there are pieces of support removal that the side cutters are really good at, but these giant clusters of trees underneath the model, uh, that's not one of them. They're particularly difficult to deal with because you don't have access to the inside of the cluster of the trees, and you're really not going to remove that until you kind of break them apart a little bit.